1856, James Buchanan Duke was born on a farm in Durham County, North Carolina. By 1890, he had created the American Tobacco Company and achieved dominance over an industry. At the time of his death in 1925, Duke's estate was valued at roughly $300 million. Recently, however, ecologists have wondered whether the property brings in more value given the ecological services that its various biomes provide. My name is David Attenborough, and I shall now endeavour to ascertain the true value of this beautiful land. Home to countless wildlife species and a plethora of biomes, this area is an ecological marvel that evokes untempered awe in all who visit. In this Garden of Eden, one cannot help but be consumed by emotions of wonder and appreciation. To enumerate its value would be to put a price on perfection. Welcome to Duke Farms. This land is home to five different biomes, each providing their own unique values and characteristics. The first biome we shall investigate is the lake biome. This biome plays an important role in the water supply and its regulation. It acts as a reservoir, collecting precipitation formed during the water cycle, ensuring that terrestrial habitats and farmlands maintain sufficient levels of water. Additionally, lakes in this estate are the primary water source and home for many keystone species, including geese and fish, without which other organisms in the ecosystem will greatly suffer. It also provides a home for sessile organisms, such as algae, which provide an ample source of food for the fish. The various fungi that dwell in the lake play an important role in the regulation of waste and pollution. These organisms break down these harmful substances into useful nutrients, ensuring the health and safety of the plants and animals. Based on all these services, from water regulation and water supply, to shelter provision and pollution control, Oak Ridge National Laboratory's Environmental Science Division estimates the ecological value of the biome to be around $12,512 per hectare per year. Lakes make up just over 66 acres of Duke Farms, or 26.71 hectares. This land gives uh, the total lake biome in Duke Farms an ecological value of $334,186 per year. Next, we make our way to the grassland biome. The trophic structure that exists within this biome consists of the initial producers, grass and wildflowers, and the first consumers, deers. Plants convert sunlight into energy, a portion of which is transferred to the deer when they consume the plants. This way, the grand grassland biome provides a food source for the various animals that live within the farm. A specific type of grass that we observe is called switchgrass, a monocot of the anthropite phylum. This grass plays an important role in preventing erosion because its deep roots provide a robust anchor that keeps soil in place during periods of heavy rainfall. In addition to the switchgrass, we can also observe two types of wildflowers of the dicot variety within the anthropite phylum. This first wildflower variety, called orange coneflower, is distinguishable by its vibrant orangish yellow colour and open petal structure. In contrast, the foxglove beard tongue is a more muted and white, white and purple with a narrow, close petal structure. These flower types greatly contribute to pollution control within the biome. The roots of the flower are capable of absorbing and filtering chemical runoff to prevent it from con contaminating the soil and spreading to other plants and animals, thus ensuring their safety. This combination of food production as well as erosion and pollution control causes the ORN laboratory to evaluate the biome at about $4,166 per hectare per year. Duke Farms contains a little more than 457 hectares of grassland, making the total of the grassland biome here to be $1,905,070 per year. Continuing our journey, we make our way to the largest biome within Duke Farms, the forest biome. This biome plays a variety of roles within the ecosystem. Similar to the grassland biome, it contributes to the waste treatment because the large roots of the trees both absorb and filter our chemical runoff. Additionally, the leaves of the tall trees create a canopy that protects the wildlife and plant life below from excessive heat and flooding by blocking out sunlight and rain. A type of tree in this forest that performs all of these tasks is the coniferous flowering dogwood, seen here. 
This evergreen tree is alive all year, adding to the biome a sense of stability and reliability. The soil in this biome contains bacteria that trap nitrogen from decaying matter and waste in the soil and convert it into ammonia, nitrates, and nitrites, which can all be used as nutrients by the plants. This addition of nutrients allows the plants to prosper. The excess nitrogen produced by the reaction is released back into the atmosphere, and this process, done continuously in the forest biome, is known as the nitrogen cycle. The fungi in the forest also act on decaying matter and waste. These decomposers break down the carbon molecules within the matter into a mineral form of carbon that can be used by the plants to grow. These excess carbon uh, molecules are released back into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide. This process is known as the carbon cycle. All these factors have led the ORN laboratory to uh, value the forest biome at $3,137 per hectare per year. 3,128 hectares of Duke Farms is the forest biome, giving the biome a total value of $9,812,536 per year in Duke Farms. Unfortunately, the next biome we will discuss is close to the public. As a result, we were unable to get a close view or footage of the biome. This is the cropland biome we are talking about. And but what we do know is that the biome provides ecological services in the form of food production. For your convenience, we have identified the area on the map that refers to the cropland area in Duke Farms. The cropland provides pro crops for the farm to sell, and it creates a food source for, for the animals that live there. Because of this attribute, the ORN laboratory places a value of $5,567 per hectare per year. It is worth noting that one hectare of cropland has a larger ecological value than one hectare of the forest or grassland biome. This is because the crops produced by the cropland biome are extremely valuable and provide a variety of uses. However, despite the great ecological value given by the cropland biome, the produce has to be cultivated and collected by humans, which reduces the revenue brought by the crops. As Duke Farms is made up of 83.77 hectares of cropland, the total ecological value brought by the cropland biome is $466,348. The final biome present in the Duke Farms is the wetlands biome. Wetlands are the marsh areas that are present on the banks of bodies of water. The wetlands at Duke Farms can be viewed at the banks of the many lakes. In our footage, you can see the area surrounding the lakes around the estate. An interesting fact is that many of the wetlands in Duke Farms are actually man-made. In 1898, James Duke built a dam on the Raritan River and rerouted the excess water into his land, creating his own lake, and making the area around his new lake into wetlands. The wetland biome provides a plethora of ecological services which altogether make this biome the most valuable one in Duke Farms. First and foremost, the wetlands are a source of clean drinking water because the biome filters out chemicals, pollutants and sediments that would otherwise clog and contaminate our waters. Wetlands also play a huge role in disturbance regulation and erosion control because they soak up runoff from the heavy rains and snow melts, providing natural flood control. This provides Duke Farms with protection against natural processes that would otherwise lead to loss of ecological value. Finally, wetlands provide critical habitats for a major portion of the state's fish, plants, and other wildlife. One plant species that thrives in the moist marsh environment of the uh, wetlands is the Christmas fern. This plant is usually found in the wetlands next to the stream beds and relies on the environment to grow. Wetlands also contain fungi, which can act as decomposers producing carbon minerals from decaying matter through the carbon cycle, just like in the forest biome. Essentially, this biome is where all the ecological services provided throughout the other four biomes come together. This sheer amount of provided services has caused the wetland biome to be evaluated at a tremendous $193,843 per uh, hectare per year. Duke Farms contains 213.88 hectares of wetlands, resulting in a whopping 
$459,141 dollar value for the buy. -in. in order to increase the value of Duke Farms through synthetic biology, one would be well served in increasing the area of a valuable biome. One example of this is adding GMOs in the croplands. GMOs are genetically modified organisms which are artificially given a trait that is beneficial to their survival. An example of this is the insertion of the Cry1AC gene from the Bacillus thuringiensis bacterium in tomato, in tomato plant growth factors in order to grow an insect resistant strain of the tomato plant. This gene produces copious amounts of Bt toxin, which, while poisonous to most insects, is not harmful at all to humans. The first step in this process is to cut out the insect resistant gene from the bacterium. The second step is to insert the gene into a vector with a marked antibiotic resistant uh, gene. A vector is a DNA molecule used as a vehicle to artificially carry foreign genetic material into another cell where it can be replicated and or expressed. Afterwards, the vector should be copied into the bacteria. Then, take tungsten or gold particles and coat the particles of the, with the DNA vector. Load the particles into Teflon bullets this will make sure that the gene is proper, properly deposited into the cell. Load the bullets into the gun and make sure to orient them properly. Take a petri dish of plant cells and shoot the bullets from the gun into the dish. This releases the particles at a very high speed into the plant cells and make sure that they cannot uh, that they can get through the cell wall. Excuse me. The vector then enters the cell and incorporates the gene into the plant genome. The cells should then be placed into a plate with selective antibiotic nutrients. This ensures that the only cells with the vector, the only cells with the vector are expressed because the vector contains the selective antibiotic. The grown cells should then be transferred to a plate with tomato plant growth factors. Soon, insect resistant tomato plants should be grown and planted into the cropland so that they can reproduce and spread the insect resistant gene throughout the population. This will increase the ecological value of the Duke Farms, uh, because having insect-resistant tomato plants means that you have a higher amount of crop surviving, and therefore a higher area of cropland. This technique can be applied with other genes and other plants, but requires extensive experimentation. Please make sure that the plants do not become harmful towards humans. Adding together the ecological income that these five biomes bring to Duke Farms, we can see that the plantation receives $53,977,290 each year. It may not seem to be a large amount when compared to the $300 million evaluation of the estate, but remember that that estate price is a one-time only value, while the $53 million in ecological value is received each year. This means that the $300 million evaluation of the estate is surpassed by the ecological value in just six years. This truly displays the value of keeping the farm intact rather than clearing the area for resources of space. My name is Sir David Attenborough. Thank you for watching.